On today's episode, we are going to take a look at some of my top three growth stocks out right now. And for each business, we're going to do the following. First, I want to take a look at how they collect their money, what what kind of revenue, what kind of market they're hitting, so I can talk about why I'm bullish in that market. After that, I want to take a look at their future expected growth. Is this company expected to continue that strong growth for the upcoming years? After that, I want to take a quick look at their balance sheet, make sure they are financially stable right now. And finally, I'm going to end with my thoughts on the overall business, if I'm still buying or, or how I'm playing that stock. And like always, if you are new to my channel, if you are a long term investor, if you like to learn about growth stocks, make sure to hit that subscribe button to all my returning viewers. Thank you so much for the support. I truly, truly appreciate it. Make sure to hit the thumbs up. And if you ever want to get in contact with me, you can find me in YouTube comments on Twitter, on my Discord channel on my Twitch live streaming, or on my weekly newsletter. But remember, all the information that I provide here is free and none of this should be taken as advice. Make sure to talk to a financial advisor before making any financial decisions. And shout out to all those that have joined the membership program on YouTube. Thank you for supporting the channel as much as you can. At the end of this video, like most of my videos, I will answer a question by one of the members. If you guys want to join, make sure to hit that join button on the bottom here on YouTube. And for those that don't know, this is the third episode of this series. I kept getting asked the same question if what were some of my top stocks? I did not have top three stocks. I have top nine stocks are in my portfolio that I'm super bullish on. Um, but of, right with all this information I'm about to share, doing nine, doing all nine stocks in one episode would be too much. It would be over a two hour episode. So I broke down into three episodes. So I already did um, one through six. This would be seven through nine. And just because these are seven through nine does not mean I'm less bullish on them. I'm, I, I want to say maybe some of the ones in here, I'm even more bullish than most of the other ones I have talked about earlier in, in my other two episodes. But these are all my tier one. There's nine right now. And there actually might be a 10th. There's a recent IPO that's going to be coming. And actually, let me know if you guys know what IPO I'm talking about. That I, Once that IPO goes and the valuation is pretty pretty insane by the time the ipo goes that will probably be my 10th stock on my tier one um, portfolio um so yeah the first company right now is google and google if you guys have been watching my other episodes there's not many high there's not many trillion dollar companies that are in my portfolio most are below a hundred billion dollar market cap because i'm looking for companies that are in in a market that can continue to grow that can be a multi-bagger for me but say, saying one trillion dollars for alphabet is not saying that it can't double right we're seeing companies like apple already hitting a two trillion dollar market cap where money many people probably like myself would have said hey one trillion is more than enough but the market believes that's not the case so and, and that could have been the same story in the past, right? Just because it has one of the highest market caps does not mean that that's where it ends. The, the market can continue to grow. Probably a few years ago, people would have already thought that Google had a market cap that was too much to grow. And we can see in the past five years, Google has grown over 140%. So it's been over a double bagger in less than five years. And that to me is pretty amazing. So let's take a look at Google and see where they collect their revenue. So here I pulled up their 10, their most recent 10 Q report and their revenue is, is pretty simple. It's, it's very simple. One thing I want to talk about is this most recent quarter that ended June 30th of 2020, Google's revenue is actually down 2% compared to the same time last year. And that's not a great thing to see, but we got to understand the overall market that we're in. And I do believe investing, one has to understand the market and see what markets are being affected by the overall state of the world. And right now, a lot of companies are pulling back from the advertisement business. So um, due to COVID-19, a lot of companies need to save money. And one of the first things they do to save money is cut down on advertisement expenses. This has driven down that rev we're going to see Google's revenue mainly comes from advertising business. You know, they own Google, they own YouTube, they own a lot of, um, they own the all these search, Google search engine. 
And most of these ads you see when you use Google's platforms, when you use YouTube, that's what businesses pay Google some form of monetary value so they can advertise. And that's where Google creates most of its revenue. So to see revenue down 2%, it tells me that the overall market right now is just slowing down with advertisement and that's okay. But at the same time, I do believe in this market when things continue to pick up, this growth is going to continue to go um, in the upcoming years. Especially right now, YouTube has become, right, you're listening to me, you're most likely watching me on YouTube, unless you're listening to me on Spotify or, or on my podcast, but if you're watching the video, you're most likely watching it on YouTube, and you're probably going to go and listen to some other person talk here in YouTube, and all the ads you're going to see, this is, this is amazing. And companies know where the eyes are at. Right now, a lot of eyes are on YouTube. A lot of eyes are always on Google. So businesses are willing to pay for where the eyes are at. So let's take a look at the revenue breakdown. So right now, in this most recent quarter, and let me zoom in for you guys so you can probably see a little, a little bit better. Um, Joe, this is for you. Joe is always telling me to, to zoom in. So Google Search and others makes up. So this company, let's start off from the bottom. Total revenue for this company was $38.3 billion. 20, 30, 29 out of that 30, about 38.8 so uh, billion out of that 38.3 billion comes from Google advertisement. And that Google advertisement is broken down into the following. First, they have Google search and others. So here's when you go to google.com and any websites within Google search. Um, this makes up $21.3 billion. So over half of the total revenue comes from Google search. This to me is, is crazy, right? I mean, how, what do you guys, what do you guys think is the likelihood of someone now starting to use another search engine? I still believe at the end of the day, people will always say Google, will always use Google. Just because Google has become a, a, a verb now, now in, in the household, right? If someone needs to find something out, they're gonna be like, let me Google that. They're, they don't go, let me go to the internet and search the answer for you. They have, cre Google has become, has become such a, such a name for itself that now it's self advertised when when you want to look something up so that's why we see a huge portion of this company's revenue youtube advertisement is 3.8 billion dollars about 10 percent of total revenue comes from youtube apps um we can see this is grow this has grown compared to the same time last year so even though businesses are pulling down on advertisement they still believe that youtube is a strong platform for them to provide um to provide ads in then we can see google networks and members properties these are just some small some small networks that google owns again it's still advertisement based and still in the internet so at the end of the day, remember I said Google makes up $29.8 billion of revenue through Google advertising, and that's um, that's over one third of the total revenue. The other portions that Google makes its revenue is Google Cloud. Um, so Google Cloud, I believe, is the third biggest clouding market right now. Let's take a look at quarter two of 2020 cloud market. I'm pretty sure we can get that. So here we can see Google Cloud is the third leader in the clouding market right now, having about 9% of the overall market. Number 18, um, number two was Microsoft with 18%, and number one was Amazon AWS with 33%. Google Cloud only 9% is still very, very strong. And we can see with the revenue right now, Google makes up $3 billion, $3 billion of the total revenue comes from Google Cloud. And this is up compared to $2 billion last year. So we can see this growth in Google Cloud. Then we have Google Others and Google and then in Google Other, they have things like their hardwares. You know, in their hardware, they have the phones, they have um, the smart home applications, uh, for example, Chromecast, and stuff like that you can find in Google Other. And that makes $5.1 billion out of, out of that $38.2 billion. So a good portion comes out from that. We can see the biggest breadwinner for Google is the overall revenue platform, but they do have markets that they're growing. We can see strong growth in Google Others. We can see strong growth in Google Cloud. 
At the end of the day, I'm not sure if you guys know, Google also has other bets and other bets makes up only $148 million of revenue. And other bets is Google buys small companies that they believe are going to change the world. I know they have some form of, of drone delivery system um, of a drone delivery company. They also have like a robotics company. They have an, uh, uh, a self-driving car company. So this is where Google has other bets that they believe are going to be technologies that are going to are going to change the overall world. So they, they start to purchase small companies like that. But at the end of the day, those bets are, are very small, right? It's $148 million out of $38.2 billion. So not, le not even 1% of total revenue comes from there. But the, the goal of those other bet revenues is one of them might be the next big thing in the world. And they want to be there ahead of time to, to make sure to capture that market. All right, so now let's take a look at Google's revenue, um, their forecasted revenue for, for the upcoming year. So for the next three years, Google is expected to grow its revenue 14.6% annually on average for the next three years. So that doesn't mean every year is going to grow 14.6%, but on average in the next three years, it will be 146 So maybe one year might be 15, maybe one year might be 14, maybe one year might be 13. Um, and this is this is most people consider a growth stock when it's growing over 20 percent some of the investors i follow 15 percent is is still strong enough um so we can see this is still considered a growth stock google is also expected to grow its revenue 15.9 percent in the next three years on average annually um, and we can see google is already a profitable business so this is a bit um, Google is one that's growing its revenue super fast and it's also continuing to grow its earnings even and it's already profitable. So next, let's take a look at their financial document uh, at their financial health to see how Google is doing. And Google is one of my favorite balance sheets that I normally take a look at. So I already know what I'm going to see. So Google has one hundred and twenty one billion dollars of quick cash. They only have about $3 billion of debt. So this company has enough cash to pay off its total debt and still have plenty of cash left over to make any crazy acquisitions. And this is one thing I'm, I'm really waiting to see. I want to see what what markets Google right now. I, I feel like in, in the next upcoming years, we're going to start seeing very, very heavy acquisitions happening. Um, we see like, for example, NVIDIA just purchased Mellanox. We see uh, what other there's there's been a few acquisitions. And I feel right now um, with the overall market changing, um, there's going to be some strong acquisitions happening. I, I'm, I'm very excited to see what Google will have for its investors in the upcoming years. All right, so now just a quick look at their forward P.E. ratio. Since Google is a company that's already being profitable, um, we can definitely see how their P.E. ratio is doing for 20 at the end of 2021. Google is expected to have a forward P.E. ratio of 28.11, right? This is a little bit higher. Normally, I, I normally see them at around 25. So we can see valuations have gone up a bit. Um, but remember, we're seeing a company with a very strong balance sheet. We're seeing a company with very strong revenue growth. And in markets, I believe, are going to continue to grow, right? Google Cloud is for sure a market we're going to continue to see strength in. Um, and I believe that. Also, at Google revenue, even though advertisement is, is not that exciting, just because the overall strength of YouTube, the overall strength of Google, I believe this Google advertisement is always going to be such a huge portion of, of, of money for, for Google. And businesses are always going to want to show their ads on the places where people have their eyes on. And that's why I'm bullish there. All right. So the second company we're going to take a look at, and I don't think many people might have guessed the three companies that a lot of people were guessing Tesla, Square, and, and Shopify would make it to my list, um, but they did not. The next company we're going to take a look at is Huya. Huya is a Chinese company. Um, I think this is the um, second Chinese company I have, and I understand that certain people might not like to invest in Chinese companies, and that's understandable. For me, for that reason, I limit my exposure, and I think I, I don't have. I think my overall portfolio in Chinese stocks is no more than twenty percent. But again, I'm, I'm not going out there and buying every Chinese stocks. It's only the ones I, I truly, truly believe in. So this is Huya, ticker H-U-Y-A. 
And if you guys know anything about the live streaming world, we have, uh, we have for example, Twitch. Twitch by Amazon. This is, who, this is exactly what Huya does. It's mainly for game live streaming. And if we all know, I'm very bullish in the esports realm. And in the esports realm, it's not, I'm more bullish in the companies that have tools for the esports world. And Huya, I believe, is going to be one strong tool for that platform, right? Company, uh, game, game players need to stream their platform. So it doesn't matter who the, who, which is the best game. It doesn't matter who the best gamer is. It doesn't matter um, what, what's, what game they're playing huya doesn't care about that it just cares that people come any type of gamer whoever the top game is whatever the popular gamer is they're gonna be streaming in their platform um so huya right now has a market cap of about 5.9 billion dollars and just to put in just to put this in in better understanding amazon has twitch twitch at the moment is worth about 15 billion dollars if it was this independent if it's its own independent platform outside of amazon so we can see in theory huya still has gro potential growth in in market cap growth so if twitch is valued at 15 billion and twitch is not allowed in china and china is one of the uh, one of the biggest esports players right now um huya is one of the biggest e streaming platforms there why can this not continue to grow um so the market cap for who we are right now is about 5.9 billion dollars and just to add icing to the cake arc investment has have just started purchasing um have just started purchasing huya i think about a month ago was one of their first purchases that they added into arc you whichever is their next generation internet etf uh and i i'm just saying i was here before them um, but but it's also pretty impressive to see a company like Arc investing in Huya. So Huya, let's take a look at their future growth. This company is expected to grow 17.3% on average for the next three years annually. That's faster than the industry and that's faster than the market. It's also expected to grow its earnings at 33.7%. So it's a fast grower in revenue and it's also a fast grower in earnings. And another great thing about Huya is right now it is profitable. A few other things that many people might not know about Huya is some of their ownership. Right now, Tencent owns about, I think this needs to be updated. I think it's a little bit more now, but Tencent owns over 36% of this company's overall business. Um, and we can see, and Tencent also owns the competitor of Huya. So Huya has one major competitor in China, and that's called Doju. And do you know who owns Doju as well? Yes, that's Tencent. So right now, Tencent is actually a, it, it's it, is is trying to merge both Huya and Doju to create one super streaming platform. And again, that will for me as an investor, I'm still seeing that Twitch. Twitch is a $15 billion market cap right now in United States. And we have China here with two leading masters. Um, how can how can a $6 billion valuation for a market like this be? I, 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 I see there's still, still so much growth in Huya. Let's take a look at their most recent earnings. Their most recent earnings, their revenue was up 30% compared to the same time last year. Their quarter two average mobile monthly active users rose 35% and their average monthly active users rose 17% year to year. We can see right now with the whole pandemic, people staying home has helped this company grow its, its user fan base. Right now, Huya has no debt, so that's a, a great thing, right? It's a company we saw with strong revenue, debt-free, and in the market, I believe, is going to continue to grow. All right, so next, let's take a look at the valuation for Huya. So we can see Huya is one that's growing super fast, and it's already profitable. And look, at the end of December 2021, this company has a forward P.E. ratio of 23.4. So a lot of people might be wondering, we just took a look at Google. Google had a forward PE ratio of 28. And Huya is actually growing faster than Google in terms of revenue growth percentage wise. Why would Huya be cheaper than Google in terms of forward PE ratio? And the only answer I can give up to this is one, Google is in uh in the United States. 
Huya is in China. So there's investors that, I mean, international risk is real, right? The, uh, the risk uh, of international, even just foreign currencies rates is risk, is, is a true risk that happens when you invest in companies overseas. So investors understand that there is risk with that. So they're willing to pay less for Huya, even though it has more potential potential growth than Google because it has that added risk. And that's what, what people need to also understand, right? When, when you look at companies in China or internationally, you see that they might be lower valued than companies here in the United States, but is because investors understand that there is an added risk to that. And for that added risk, they're willing to pay, they're willing to have a lower valuation for them. So taking a look at Huya and Google, let's say uh, uh, the way I enter the market, I never buy a stock full out at all. Like I, I would never go in with a 10%, uh, a 10% portfolio at once in, in one position. I, I, if at most, I probably will start with a five and continue to grow its way from there. Um, Huya and Google, I dollar cost average on a weekly basis. On a weekly basis, I put money on the market. So with this money on the market, I, I select all my portfolios, all my positions and see which one I would be willing to put more money this week compared to, to another one. Huya right now, I believe I would put more money in Huya and I would buy Huya more frequently than I would Google. At the end of the day, all both of them I'm, I'm very bullish on. Um, but right now, I'm a little bit more bullish on Huya based on its valuation and based on the overall growth this company is expected to see. All right, so the final company, my number nine is Sorens. Many people might not have heard of this, and this is a very small company with a market cap of only $2 billion. This is ticker CRNC, and let's take a look. First, let's try to understand what they do. So what I ended up doing is going to their, because this is one that I feel is a little bit more interesting than the other ones. Um, and, and I believe this is why many people did not did not see this one coming. So they gave out an overall investors presentation on June 3rd of 2020. So that's about two months ago. In a long term investors mindset, two months ago is not a huge difference because not much changes fundamentally for for the business. So here, this is pretty much all the in more interface that go between the driver and the automobile that's the market sorens is doing they are also the global leaders in the artificial intelligence and voice powered assistings across all automobile oems their customers include and this is one i did a video on on sorens a few uh, i want to say about three months ago and i kept getting nonsense about this because i at the beginning of the video i said one of their customers is tesla here, number two, global leaders in AI and voice-powered assistance across all automotive OEMs. Customers include all major automobile manufacturers. And now let's take a look at that. Oh, look, number two, they are the global leaders in AI and voice-powered assistance. Their customers include all major automobile manufacturers. Over here, they have a picture of all, my, all major oems worldwide and we see what companies we have here oh look we have bmw we have mercedes-benz we have audi we have porsche we have ferrari we have tesla right here so i keep getting this question asked and we can see it right here on their slide um so now that we understand what sorens does they they are leading the market in this and we can see with the two billion dollar market i i see a huge potential growth for this company so let's take a look at annual revenue growth for the next three years sorens is expected to grow 13.2 percent on average this is faster than the industry and this is faster than the market so that's a great thing annual growth this company is expected to grow its its earnings 45.9 percent on average faster than the industry and faster than the market normally when we see that type of earnings growth we think that the business is not profitable but right now, Sorens is expected to be profit. It has been profitable. This year is expected to take a hit. But remember, 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 like I said, you have to understand how the market is doing. Right now, we understand due to COVID-19, the following sectors are the ones that are being hit the most in form of tech. Um, automobile, 
mobile plat mobile mobile cellular like mobile any type of device any type of electronic device that does not have to do like working from home so they they did take a big hit in in uh in phone sales and we can see that with apple apple took took a decent hit with iphone sales so i i for example automobile and phones are some of the markets that are being hit right now and this is one reason we can see Sorens not expected to be profitable this year but the previous years and the upcoming years it has been profitable next let's take a look at their financial health Sorens right now has about 132 million dollars of cash and short-term investment and they have about 2733 million dollars in debt so right now they have a little more debt than they do have ca than they have cash almost a two to one ratio of debt to cash but remember this is a company that makes money and like how i explained it in in my previous episode it, you have to understand what stage of life of business is in to really try to to see how to rate their balance sheet and it's just like a everyday a everyday human like for myself if i was someone without a job not making money i would want to have a lot of cash in the bank to be able to survive and i wouldn't be taking out huge debts that i wouldn't be able to pay so if i didn't have a job i wouldn't take out a mortgage debt right but now let's say i had a high paying job um and now that i have a high paying job and i have money coming in now it would be okay for me to take a big debt because i'll be will i'm have the money coming in and i'll be able to pay that debt that's exactly how one should look at a company's balance sheet is this company making money no it's not making money okay if it's not making money we have to be strict with that balance sheet if it is making money it's okay to be a little bit lenient and i am going to be a little bit lenient because the rents is one that's making money so they have money coming in this year is going to be a bit different for them where they might be they, they are expected to go negative but we can see in past history and in future expectation growth outside of this year this company is going to go back to making money so even if they have a little more debt than cash that is is a okay with me because i believe this market that they're in is going to continue to grow all right so now let me take a look at how i'm willing to to deal with sarens sarens to me honestly it's between huya and sarens uh, and sarens um sarens is the one i'm a bit more bullish on compared to huya but not by much let's say huya was here Sar sarens would be here um, and Google would be under that. Again, all three, I'm very bullish on. All three, I am continuing to buy. I'm purchasing on a weekly basis. Maybe, so these are my nine companies. And not all nine I'm buying every single week, right? I, I Maybe some weeks I might buy four. Maybe the next week I'm buying the other four. But overall, these are the positions I am building my, these are the positions I'm continuing to grow as the weeks progress. Um, and just doing this video has got me even more happy to be in these in in all these companies because i i just see so much growth in in all of these nine so i hope you guys enjoyed today's episode and actually let me do today's question so today's question comes by bobu and let me let me zoom in for you guys so bobu asked the following question what is your strategy of investing how do you spread your money among different holdings and do you invest every month a fixed amount so bubble first i want to say thank you so much for the support i truly truly appreciate it and if anybody ever wants to have their question asked make sure to hit that join if you want to support the channel and, and this is a way of me thanking you like i said all my information is free and i didn't want to have a paid wall that all that that gave any special any special special information to those that joined so my the first thing i thought about was just doing a question that that they might want to ask on a weekly basis. So Bobo, my overall strategy of investing is very simple. I look for growth stocks that I believe are in markets, in markets that I feel are bullish. For me right now, it would be, for example, the gaming market, the e-commerce market, FinTech, and any form of disruptive technology that I can understand. And that's the thing, right? Um, maybe some of the markets I'm in you might not you whoever my viewers might not understand but you might have the understanding of other markets based on your experience right i'm an electrical engineer so you can see most of my are uh, are, are based in some form of technological aspect that i can understand how do i spread my money among different holdings this to me is uh, every 
I, I put money and let me answer your other questions. I don't put a fix. Um, not there's no true fixed amount of money I put into the market. But every week I put somewhere every week on average, I would say I put like four to six hundred dollars on the, on the market on a weekly basis. So throughout a month, it'll probably be about two thousand to some two thousand plus dollars in the market. Some mar most of the time that's going to be my low point. There might be there might be months where where I might have just spent less money in the in my overall life, or I might have just gotten money from some other form of income. For example, most of my YouTube money income goes straight to my portfolio. So as I'm getting bigger in YouTube, I'm getting more money coming in there. I'm gonna start putting more money into my into my portfolio, and that's just gonna continue to add up. So there's no fixed amount. It's just right now at, at minimum, I try to put around I want to say around two thousand a month. Um, and there's no limit to my max side if i have more if i have some multiple form of incomes coming in i'm gonna go here and straight put more money to work because at the end of the day i want to be financially free in the next 15 20 years hopefully um and the way i spread that money among my different holdings is i i just i, I look at my portfolio on the pretty much on the monthly maybe on the by every two weeks i look at my portfolio and i try to look at my holdings percentage wise and I, I actually have an Excel sheet where I show my percentage of each holdings. And what I do is, hey, this is I already all the companies that make it into my portfolio are ones I understand. And I understand how bullish I am in the market. So I look at my overall portfolio and I say, hey, oh, this one only makes X percentage of my portfolio. I'm a lot more bullish in this company. So this is a company I'm going to add. Another thing I do is sometimes some of my companies take a hit. And when they take a hit, I take a back look and say, what was my, what is my portfolio weight? And if they take in a big hit, I'll be like, okay, right now is one, is, is time for me to add. So for me, I just pretty much dollar cost average on a weekly basis. And the whole things I choose depend on how bullish I am. Do I believe I have enough portfolio holdings on them or do I want to increase my holdings? Have they taken a beating recently? Have, have they recently released some great news that have made me even more bullish? So a lot of that comes into play when, when I purchase some of my companies. So I hope that answered your question. Thank you again for the support. I truly, truly appreciate it, Bobu. Um, and to anybody that watched this episode, thank you so much. Take care and have a good night.